Toyota and Honda, possibly two of the best manufacturers to come out of Japan for cars. Toyota for the longest time have been the king of hybrids, but did you know that actually, even before Toyota came out with their current hybrid system, Honda was actually first with their insight with the IMA, the Integrated Motor Assist. It was a very early attempt but different than Honda, Toyota did not give up on their initial first generation Prius design. They kept going and that's why they are the king of hybrids today. But Honda lately have been coming back in the hybrid game and Honda, unlike Toyota, is not a conservative manufacturer and they are extremely innovative and their engineering is really good. So in today's video, we're going to do something very difficult, which is which one of these two systems is better? Is the Toyota system better or is the Honda hybrid system better? Let us go on this journey. Let us see what both of these top Japanese manufacturers have done with their hybrid systems to see which one is actually better. Let's start with the engines. And just for clarification, the cars we're using for comparison is, this is a 2022 Toyota Camry Hybrid. This is a 2023 Honda CRV Hybrid. This is a fourth generation hybrid system. They do have fifth generation. We'll talk about it a little bit later toward the video. This is unknown generation. Honda is just kind of getting back into the hybrid game. Let's call it second or third generation, something like that. Let's start with the engine choices. In the Toyota, we have a non-turbo four-cylinder 2.5 liter, which happens to be in this case, the A25A FXS. In the Honda, we have a two liter non-turbo four-cylinder engine direct injected. Both of these engines are super well made and super well engineered and very modern and the expectancy of reliability will be pretty high. Let's start with some of the kind of the highlights of these engines. Both of these engines have electronic variable valve timing on the intake side. In Toyota side, VVT-IE. In the Honda side, it's called VTC. Basically a little motor that drives the intake gear, advance and retards the timing, and that's about it. Sounds like a disaster waiting to happen, but these systems are actually very reliable and they work very well. On the exhaust side, they both have oil controlled variable valve timing, which is something that I've tried and true. In the Honda side is a VTEC, in the Toyota side is just VVTI. Cooling systems for those engines. On the Toyota side, things get a little bit more complicated with a coolant distribution valve and it sends the coolant where it needs to go to help with a faster warm up. In the Honda side, they actually don't have that. They just have a normal standard cooling system. Both of these hybrid systems on the engine side, they have an electronic water pump. Pretty cool because the, then the computer can really control when that water pump comes on and when it shuts off. So on the cooling system, Honda takes the sim simple route. Toyota takes the more efficient route because this one warms up quicker than this one. More on the construction of the engine. So I think Honda takes the simple route. They have a single timing cover, very simple to service. Toyota, on the other hand, with this engine, they went with a dual timing cover. There's a timing cover, time chain and everything, and then another cover in front. Makes it a little bit more cumbersome for, for service, but both of these engines are extremely well engineered and well designed. Now, both of these engines do have plastic valve covers, which is something people don't like, but this is possibly the best plastic valve cover you will ever see in the automotive industry. However, there is one thing. Both of these engines have a form of direct injection, and we're going to talk about that in a few moments here. But in the Toyota side, the high pressure fuel pump sits on top of the valve cover. So should you want to replace a valve cover gasket or something simple, you have to remove that, remove so much things just to get the valve cover out. In Honda though, they have a pretty ingenious design. It's not exclusive to this. They've been doing this for a bit. There is a separate piece on the side away from the valve cover that has a high pressure pump. So if you want to remove the valve cover, you don't actually have to remove anything with the fuel system, which is pretty cool. Now where Toyota kind of overtakes Honda in the engine department of the hybrid system is the fuel injection. In the Toyota side, you have dual fuel injection, D4S. You have basically port injectors and direct injectors, making carbon buildup not an issue. 
But in the Honda side, we only have direct injection. Now, Honda does make some of the better direct injection systems out there, kind of lesser on the carbon buildup side. They have a multi-stage system that kind of have something built into it to help with that, but still, eventually at some point, carbon will start building up, whether it becomes a problem or not, that depends on your driving conditions, but it's a high, much higher risk with this than with this system. So in this department, Toyota takes that. Overall, I think of this. Toyota takes a slight edge in re reliability and kind of long-term reliability. However, Honda with this two, two liter engine, they really take things in refinement. This engine is so refined. It has so much ins more insulation than the Toyota's 2.5. It's very quiet. It's sound overall kind of Let's talk about the driving experience a little bit. This engine sounds very nice. It's not buzzy, it's muffled enough, but when you go into higher RPM, it sounds proper. This engine, on the other hand, it's a little bit louder, a little bit more buzzy, and that's really the comparison between the two. I think Toyota takes reliability, this one takes refinement. Let's talk about the transmissions. Now, initially, if you're not familiar with these cars, this one has an ECVT transmission. This one has an ECVT transmission. They're both Japanese. They're Toyota and Honda. You would think they have exactly the same transmission. But that is so far from the truth because, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a Ford. This is Honda. They will not just copy their big neighbor next to them and go, go with it. Honda has their own ECVT design that is completely different than Toyota's, even though Toyota's longer and they've been around longer with the ECVT, but Honda's design is just simply brilliant. Let's talk about a few things. Both of these transmissions have two motors, one big one, one small one. Both of these transmissions operate in theory like a CVT transmission. Basically, they have a continuously variable ratio, but they're not actually CVTs like belt and cones and whatnot. They're nothing like that. They're actually simpler, at least in the Toyota side. Let me explain. See, in the Honda, there is two motors. Big motor, traction motor, and smaller motor, the generator motor. The big traction motor drives the car, but it can also generate. The smaller motor starts the engine and charges the battery. In Toyota land, there's also two motors, MG1 and MG2. MG1 is the smaller one that starts the engine, charges. MG2 is the bigger one that drives the car and charges. So you might be thinking, wait a second, that sounds exactly the same. And it does. But how they drive the car and how they do everything else is completely different. Toyota went the simple mechanical route. They have a planetary gear set that does all the magic. The way the transmission and the shafts are arranged, that's how it achieves which motor is driving when and which one is charging when. And there are times where the little motor is just used to hold to create a reduction in the planetary. Very cool design, but it's mostly mechanical. There's nothing inside of this transmission that is high-tech electronics except the motors. There's no clutches. There is hardly a pump. Lately, they've been putting a pump just for cooling, but there's not really a hydraulic circuit. There's nothing, no valve body, no solenoid, nothing. It's just a pure mechanical ingenuity with a little bit of an electrical twist. On Honda's side, though, things are completely different, so vastly different. This transmission has two clutches, the low-range clutch and the high-range clutch. So basically, the engine is connected to one of the motors, and then this motor is connected to either or clutch. In certain positions, you're going to be in the low side where you're driving a little bit of a lower speed. It's going to engage the low and you're driving lower speed, but when it needs to shift, it's going to shift to a higher gear. And now, essentially, in, in an essence, it is a two-speed CBT, if you can uh, wrap your mind around that, because it's extremely complicated. I am trying to keep things simple here for comparison's sake. The thing about this system is, it does have advantages, but it also has drawbacks. Let's talk about a few. Toyota system is very CVT-like. You drive it, there's that drone. Yes, they, lately they've been trying to add kind of simulated shifting just to make it feel more natural, but it's still, the drone's like a CVT. That's just how they are. On the Honda side, though, because you have these two clutches, it actually shifts 
like a car. Not like an eight-speed transmission, but you feel physical shifts, and then in between, because you only have two shifts, in between them, they put the mimic shifts, they do it better. That's the cool thing here. Now, it's starting to sound like Honda system is better, but there's actually a catch, a very small one. According to the data, and this was really difficult to verify because the system is relatively newer-ish, and they've, tried, they've just changed it. According to the technical data, you can only have the engine drive the car or the electric motor drive the car. But when they're both together, it's not as high of an output as that mechanical direct connection as Toyota. So that equals when you take off, the Toyota will initially take off quicker. This one will be laggy because it's still trying to decide which clutch to get. There is a slight delay until things get going because you have clutches, hydraulics that need to engage to get going. So you will notice that you're driving this at slower speed. It's perfectly smooth. Then you accelerate. There's a few second delay until it actually engages and we're going. In the Toyota land, I mean, especially with the fourth generation hybrid system, it's immediate. Engine is off, you're driving in EV mode, you press the gas, all of a sudden the engine comes on, revs up, and we're going. Immediate. There is no delay because things are mechanical and they're already connected. That's the difference. That's the catch. However, Honda has one mode that is not possible in Toyota Land. See, in Toyota Land, because of that mechanical connection, there is limitations. You can't have the engine running to charge the battery and then the battery drive the car. It's just not mechanically possible because you're going to create a reduction by doing that. You can either drive, both drive, or both not drive, one drive or the other. But you can't have the engine running just to charge the battery and drive. It's just not possible here. But that is possible with the Honda system. And actually, that is a mode specific for that. So here's what Honda will do. Because of the kind of the clutch orientation, they can have the engine running only to charge the battery. And then the battery also supplies power to the big motor to drive the car. So essentially, kind of goes back to the Volt concept, Chevy Volt. Horrible car, by the way. But you get the idea, the concept. There is advantages and disadvantages to both. And this one was really difficult to, for me to draw a conclusion, which one is better. But here is the gist, because I don't think there is a better here. There is one for each occasion. The Toyota system is more immediate, smoother, kind of, there's no delays. But at the same time, it is CVT-like, it drones. That's just the way it is because of that mechanical connection. They can't really simulate better shifts. On the Honda side of things, though, it drives nicer. If you're a car guy, you're going to appreciate this better. You know, you don't have to be stuck with a droning hybrid system. This doesn't drone. This has real shifts that you feel them. They're, the simulated ones are better, but then there is real shifts that you feel and they work better. Efficiency-wise, the system might have a slight edge on efficiency simply because you can run the engine just to charge the battery, not to drive. And this one can't really do that. And that's the limitation of the two. However, this is where, and this is going to start to establish the theme of this comparison. Toyota's transmission is much more simpler. There is a lot less to go wrong in this transmission. You don't have to worry about fluid contamination and valve bodies and clutches and slipping and all this. That doesn't exist because there's no clutches in this transmission. There's no solenoids. There's no valve body. However, in the Honda transmission, all that exists. You have actually multi-plates, steel clutches, and you have solenoids and you have a valve body and you have all this stuff of a traditional automatic transmission. So again, this takes the driving experience. It is a nicer driving experience. You do have those slight delays, but overall, they're a small compromise. But Toyota takes a long-term reliability and kind of the ruggedness. It's a rugged transmission. It's, all, it's kind of like a manual transmission, really. And that's where the comparison is at for the transmissions. Let's talk about the braking system of these cars because hybrids actually have a very different braking system than usual cars. In a way, it is a brake-by-wire system. And both of these cars do have 
somewhat of a brake by wire system. And the reason for that is they need to allow for regenerative braking. Basically, when you brake, they're not gonna apply the hydraulic brakes. It's gonna engage one of the motors. The force of the road will turn it, and then you can charge your battery. But if you have hard braking or you're at such a low speed that really it's not, they have to engage the mechanical brakes, the hydraulic brakes. But here's where things are different a little bit. When I look at the designs, overall design of the system and how it's installed in the car and everything, you can start to tell where Toyota has more experience with this because their system initially, when they first came out, it was the same thing. So many components and thrown around. You could tell they were trying to use the parts bin special. Okay, let's use what we have and modify it to work. But eventually they came out with a unified system that works. Basically, the, all the components of the brake system, the traction control, the ABS, the every, everything started getting integrated into two parts. One part is, the, it's called the pedal simulator in a way. It basically measures how hard you're pressing the brakes so the computer knows, is this an emergency stop or is this just normal slow? How much braking force you're putting? And then in Toyota land, you have a second component that is basically the pump that applies the hydraulic brakes when you need them, kind of a power boost, if you would. And then it has a little accumulator that collects high pressure brake fluid to apply it when needed. That's about it. And the computer is integrated in it and everything is just one unit. You basically have two components, few lines, and that's it. In the Honda system, however, uh, this is where I feel like they have not perfected their system yet. You have way too many components. You have the pedal simulator, right out of the pedal, and then you have the pump and the accumulator somewhere else, and then you have the ABS actuator in the computer somewhere else. There's too many components, too many uh, like lines and things going all over the place because they have not come with a unified system. Okay, we came with a better version of the system. We're gonna put it in all our hybrids. Life is good. Toyota's arrived at that, Honda has not. So this is where potentially the braking system in the Toyota feels more, again, mature. There's more experience and research behind it than Honda's. The only point where Honda comes back that they did things a little better than Toyota. Look, hybrid brakes will always be strange because you're pressing the brake pedal, it's regen and sometimes hydraulic. There's always a strange feeling to them because they're brake by wire in a way. But Something notorious with Toyotas, when you're at very low speeds, the transition between regen braking into hydraulic braking is always abrupt and you feel it. All of a sudden you press the brake at lower speeds and it just engages and it like noses the car down if you're not used to it. Honda system seems to be a little softer on this transition. Perhaps it's a less aggressive brake system. That's why it's more like a normal car than they kind of modified it. That's the only advantage. So in this case, I think we have a perfect tie here because they're both excellent systems. They work really well. What about the all-wheel drive systems? Now, the Camry doesn't have all-wheel drive in the hybrid, but let's talk, for example, a RAV4 all-wheel drive. This is where it's flat out Toyota takes the lead by a mile because I feel like this is where Honda just decided Let's just make it all-wheel drive, it doesn't matter. Toyota really went all out because in the Toyota world, you don't have a transfer case, you don't have a prop shaft, you don't have, a, really none of this exists. You have a rear motor in the back that drives the rear wheels on demand. You can really control when that all-wheel drive kicks in. But the best part is when you push the brakes, the rear motor can also generate so you have more region braking. But in Honda land, that's not the route they went. They actually went the old, old school route because this CRV has a mechanical transfer case, a prop shaft that goes all the way to the back, a rear differential and a coupler and all that mess. Basically the same as a gasoline car. You can't really do extra region with it. It's a lot of loss. You have all this prop shaft that you're spinning and complicates maintenance, complicates repairs. You have all this stuff in the way, adds all this weight. And I think in this department, Toyota's hybrid all-wheel drive system is a lot better than Honda's. What about hybrid battery construction? Well, in the Toyota land, they have been using lithium ion and nickel metal hydride. In Honda land, at least in this 2023 Honda CRV, it seems to be going with lithium ion. 
nothing really wrong with either. Nickel metal hydride, kind of more proven in Toyota side. Lithium ion is new kid in the block. Lighter weight does have advantages and disadvantages. But where Toyota starts to take a slight lead is when you look at their battery design and packaging, it's, you could tell this is a more mature team that put this together. Not saying that the Honda design is not good, but just the packaging and the location. It feels like there has been a lot of trial and error to get to this point, and that is actually the case. Toyota has a longer standing with hybrids than Honda. That's just the way it is. And the original Honda IMA was completely different. Nothing even close to what we have today. But here's where it actually differs. Toyota battery, the latest batteries, are much smaller, much better packaged because they started building the entire car thinking of the hybrid model. Honda is not there yet, believe it or not. Because in the CRV, they put the battery in the back, killing all the bottom storage space. That seems like a last minute add on. And this is what we used to see when we go back to the days of the Camry, where they basically took half your trunk space to put the battery back when the first generation Camry Hybrid came out. But then they got better and better to a point where really the cargo space in, in newer Toyota hybrids hardly has changed from the non-hybrid to a hybrid because they really thought of it. They started putting them underneath the seat and life's good. But in the CRV, it takes all your storage space in the back. It just kind of doesn't make sense. But more than that, Toyota learned the hard way that the number one maintenance on their hybrid batteries is the cooling system. The fan has now has a filter that you can clean and service and slowly becoming a service thing. They learned that the hard way from fans getting clogged over the years and they discovered, hey, we should perhaps put a filter and have it serviceable so they don't get clogged. Honda's not there yet because this car doesn't have a filter. That is the one thing. So you, you can start to see where Toyota's edge and basically they have more experience. That's what I mean to say they're more mature. They have more experience with this than Honda Eventually, probably Honda will get there as well. But as of today, in 2023, I see Toyota's placement of battery and their packaging of the battery better than Honda. Let's talk about some of the similarities between these two systems, because remember, these are two Japanese companies. They are the best two Japanese companies and their mindset is similar. So let's talk about the similarities between these two. Both of these systems have something I call the brain, the, the boss of the hybrid system. This is what does everything. Charges, discharges, sends power, does the convergence, does everything for the hybrid system. In Toyota land, that is called the inverter with converter assembly. In Honda land, that is called the PCU. It's just the wording they like to use. They're both very similar in construction similar in size, they work exactly the same, they work very efficient, they are both cool and cooled. So both of these cars will have an additional cooling system with a separate electric water pump, separate radiator, only to cool that inverter or PCU, in the case of Toyota and Honda. Very similar design, works exactly the same. The other similarity is both of these engines, they have EGR with a cooled EGR with cool and cooled going through their cooler, EGRs with Hondas have been a question mark in the past, not lately. Same thing with Toyota. They have EGR. They're trying to get the most, the best rating, basically, emission rating. So that's why they have EGR. Very similar system. They work almost exactly the same. And nothing really special about either one of them. And most importantly, both of these systems have something called a DC to DC converter. What that does is takes the high voltage from the high voltage battery, drops it down to 14 volts to charge the 12 volt battery. They both have 12 volt batteries and th that is used just to power the hybrid system on and then that takes over. But that means there is no alternator. And additionally, there's no starter because remember that the smaller motor here drives the engine and it brings it on to life. And also something else that is similar between those two is they both have electric air conditioning compressor. So wait a second, we don't have an alternator, water pump is electric, compressor is electric, we don't have a drive belt in neither of these. Now some Toyota models will have a mechanical water pump, unknown why they went to it, 
the electric one works great. This particular one doesn't have it. So basically, no alternator, no starter, no belt. Hey, life is good, less is more in this case. What about maintenance costs? And the truth have to be said, both of these systems are so similar in a way and so well made. Maintenance costs, I think, will be very close. Let's talk about them. So compared to your regular gasoline car, hybrids will have a few things that are additional. They will have an additional cooling system that needs the coolant replaced. And in the case of Honda and Toyota, both of these cooling systems use the same coolant. Nothing really special about it. Unlike, for example, Hyundai, they use a special non-conductive coolant. They don't have that here. It doesn't, it, I don't know why Hyundai does that. Then we have the regular gasoline engine, you know, spark plugs, oil changes, whatnot. Very similar, same thing. But then we have something of a negative maintenance. That's the cool thing with hybrids. First thing is, simple stuff. You'll never replace an alternator, because there isn't one. So is the starter. So is the drive belt. That is pretty cool. But there's more stuff. Your brakes will last a very long time in both of these, because most of the time you're using regen braking, and when you're not, you're using that hydraulic brake only in certain instances, but in normal driving, you actually won't use it as much. So brakes are known to last over 100,000 miles, well over some cases in to older Toyotas, 200,000 miles on the original brakes. People usually end up replacing them because they're so rotted out or rusted. That's why they replace them. But there's one place where potentially Toyota gains a slight edge. If you have an all-wheel drive model, Maintenance will be simpler, service will be simpler, labor times and things will be lower. And that's just the way it is here. You have a transfer case in your way, you have the drive shaft, you have all this stuff. That doesn't exist in Toyota all-wheel drive hybrid. But then breaking down kind of the more the battery cost and cost of repair, cost of things. Folks, hybrids have been proven to be very reliable. Battery being one of something that scares most folks. But the truths have to be said, price comparison between Toyota and Honda is very similar when you're going to buy a new part. However, this is where, again, we go back to the maturity of the Toyota hybrid system. If you have a very old car, and when these things get old, with Toyota, you have more options. They have been around with hybrids for a very long time. You have aftermarket options, you have research, you have a lot of opportunities to get things done just to get you by at a cheaper cost. Honda, not so much. So that's the one thing I will have to say. Folks, when it comes to hybrid systems and maintenance costs and long-term reliability, these two are probably the best systems you can find. And maintenance costs should not be something, kind of a deciding factor. Yes, these cars have a lot of technology, but they've, they're so well made. And these two really show that when you look at them. So how do these two hybrid systems drive in the real world? Which one drives nicer? What are the advantages and disadvantages of the two? Folks, the Toyota system, right off the, like taking off from a stop, it'll be more immediate, it just, just goes. This will take a few seconds to really get going because you have clutches that need to engage, things that need to be orientated. But once you are going, the, the Toyota hybrid system will feel like a typical CVT. Push it a little bit, it'll drone. Some people, this will not even bother them. So it's just the way the car drives. But the car people, this will annoy them. But on the Honda side, the drive feels more refined. Past the initial takeoff, if, unless you push it to the limit, Things will drive normal. If you push it a little bit, it won't drone. It has nice simulated shifts, and then it has real shifts because it has clutches. So the driving experience will be more smooth on the Honda side. And because Honda's system will be able to turn on the engine, charge the battery, and drive with the electric motor, while Toyota's doesn't do that, your EV range will feel longer. Their installation of the engine is better, so when the engine comes on just to charge, you won't feel it. And you'll feel like, wow, this EV range is really long. And that's something that really makes a big difference. So it really comes down to which, which style do you want? Do you want kind of the reliable, tried and true, or do you want the refined, but does come up with a few compromises? 
this is where it is at. The braking in the Toyota is better at kind of higher speeds. It just feels like a more immediate system. It works faster than Honda's. But Honda's is a little bit smoother at lower speeds. When you're just about to come to a stop, if you're really sensitive with braking, you'll feel this one smoother. So Toyota versus Honda, which one is better in their hybrid system? Folks, this is so difficult to come to a direct conclusion. Toyota is better or Honda is better because they're both so good. The truth has to be said, these are one of the finest hybrid systems, best engineering, and just things are really good here. So let's kind of break it down to where the strengths and weaknesses of both are. On the Toyota first, this is overall on a long-term basis is going to be a more reliable system they made better choices with their engine kind of design for example the d4s system you have port and direct injectors honda has only direct even though it's a very clever direct injection doesn't have a lot of problems but overall in the end you're going to have some carbon buildup and that is inevitable then things like the transmission toyota's ecvt is basically a brick nothing will break it unless you really push it to the limit that's the truth it's a mechanical transmission it doesn't really have a lot of clutches and things that wear down versus hondas they have clutches and that's something eventually will be a thing just like any automatic transmission with clutches then the all-wheel drive system in toyota's it has less components and it actually works better than hondas kind of just mechanical and there's more stuff more rotating mass and more weight and all that stuff. But where Honda's system shines is the way it feels. Because of the clutches and because of the better insulation on the engine, things feel more refined with this system. Doesn't have the typical CVT drone unless you push it. And that makes it just a better driving system overall. Then when it comes to the batteries, I think Toyota's hybrid batteries, they're better packaged they're smaller, they've had longer time to figure out how do we put this battery in this car without intruding on the space. Honda is not there yet in that department. However, the overall reliability of both of these batteries expected to be exactly the same. Folks, these are some of the best hybrids out there. You cannot make a mistake buying a Toyota hybrid or a Honda hybrid. They are super refined, they're super well made, and the engineering behind them is really good. In my opinion, this is as close as you will get to a perfect hybrid system anywhere else in the automotive industry it doesn't even come close but there is one thing one problem with honda that eventually they'll probably figure it out but they're not there yet see i mentioned this was a 22 camry with a fourth generation hybrid system well, Toyota just came out with a fifth generation hybrid system we will review it we will talk about it in the future but I feel like they're re-entering the hybrid market and they're serious about it now. They are yet to have a competent plug-in hybrid while Toyota does. They are yet to have a competent performance hybrid. Toyota's already coming out with performance hybrid models. So this is where, if they're not gonna move in this direction, this is where Toyota also is gonna start taking the edge again. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.